How's it going Star Seekers? Hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be taking a look at Battle Axe on the Nintendo Switch. It's a hack and slash action game where you get to play as one of three heroes who are on a quest to put an end to the reign of an evil sorceress called Etheldred. But the task isn't going to be an easy one as hordes of monsters stand in the way and you're going to have to do some hacking and plenty of slashing as you battle your way through them on your journey towards Etheldred's tower in the icy wastelands to the north. Taking influence from the likes of Gauntlet, Golden Axe and rather surprisingly Zombies Ate My Neighbourhood, Battle Axe is teeming with retro fueled nostalgia but can it muster the magic that these games have left imprinted on every 90s gamer's soul and does the game's content justify its rather hefty price tag? In this review I hope to answer those questions, so sharpen those blades, comb those beards and let's get into it. So Battle Axe has just hit the Switch eShop where it's priced at $24.99 in the UK, $29.99 in the US and it's also available on Xbox, Playstation and Steam. Upon first hearing the game's name and seeing its screenshots, I immediately assumed it was going to be another Golden Axe clone, with its three character archetypes and the actual character select menu reminding me a lot of that game, but as you'll soon see, Battle Axe's gameplay more closely resembles Zombies Ate My Neighbourhood or the lesser known Mega Drive game known as the Chaos Engine. Now the story in Battle Axe is pretty generic. An evil sorceress rules over the land, our characters embark on a quest to stop her and it really doesn't play much of a role in the game besides justifying her presence as the game's end boss. As you play through Battle Axe there's no mention of the sorceress at all and the game's areas and enemies could easily be incorporated into any nice hack and slash game. Now while this was pretty typical of many games of that era, games like Golden Axe at least had intermissions detailing the journey of the game's characters and I would have liked to have seen a little more presence of the game's lore or story if only to develop the main characters and Etheldred. Anyway, let's put the story aside and get into actual gameplay. Now Battle Axe is an offline only game which can be played with either one or two players and to begin with you have two game modes available to you, the first of these being arcade mode. Upon starting a new game, each player gets to select from one of three unique characters. You have Rooney, the hulking ginger maned marauder, Ilo the wizard who also has a cracking beard and Faye the dark elf who looks like she's been pulled straight from a Warcraft game. Now the controls in Battle Axe are extremely simple. We move around with the left thumbstick, can perform melee attacks with the B bone and ranged attacks with the A bone and we can also perform an evasive maneuver which doubles up as an attack with the Y bone. Now each of the game's characters comes with their own pros and cons which promote slightly different playstyles. Faye for example is the fastest of the characters who has the quickest movement speed and excels at melee combat but her ranged attack only allows for one of her projectiles to be on the screen at any one time. Rooney is the bruiser of the group with the biggest health pool and an average attack speed though he is the slowest of the three characters. And finally, Iolo excels with ranged combat and he's able to remain stationary to aim his shots, but he's also pretty squishy. His evasive manoeuvre is a teleport which only damages enemies in the location he teleports to and well his melee skills are pretty poor, though destroying an enemy with only a beard is still pretty badass. Now like the controls, your objective in each of the game's levels is also very simple. You make your way through the stage, defeating enemies and rescuing NPCs located in set locations which net you some extra points. Each of these NPCs appears with a name randomly selected from the Kickstarter donators who pledged £50 or more, which I thought was a nice little touch. You'll also find chests scattered about levels containing pickups which can be activated by using the X button and these include things like magic potions which will fully restore your health bar, bombs which can be tossed at enemies and explode in a small area and magic scrolls which basically nuke everything on screen. Now levels themselves are all pretty linear and while they do feature some branching paths they all lead to the same destination an end of level encounter with a boss who you must defeat in order to move on to the next level. 
In between levels, this pretty little wench shows up, offering her words for sale. And as you kill enemies in levels, you learn coins, which can be used to buy magic scrolls, replenish your health, buy additional health bars and three different buffs. The first of which increases your movement speed, the second your attack damage, and I believe the third increases your evasive maneuvers range, though I'm not quite sure about this one. Now when it comes to each level's design, they're all pretty well laid out with a few more challenging sections to them. But much like the game's story and the characters, there's no real context or story given to the levels. And again, they could appear in any generic adventure game. As you work your way through the levels, enemies will constantly spawn around you, which does keep the action going. But there are also locations within levels where predetermined sets of enemies will spawn, and these are usually next to these cone-shaped spires, which you often need to destroy in order to open the way forward. The enemies themselves come in melee and ranged forms, with the odd enemy perched in wooden towers which must be destroyed. And while there is a little variety to them, with some enemies charging at you or teleporting about the place, in all honesty, there aren't actually that many enemies in the game. A couple of new enemies are introduced in each level, which in addition to the new types of traps does up the difficulty a little as you progress through the levels, but they are essentially the same enemies with a new character sprite or a little extra health. And this stands to highlight my main issue with Battle Axe, which in my opinion is an overall lack of content. Now there are actually only 4 levels in the arcade mode, and while things did feel quite tough to start with, once I got the controls down and memorised the enemy spawn locations, I was able to breeze through the game on easy mode in about 30 minutes and that was playing on my own. The game's bosses are also very simplistic in the mechanics on easy mode, and I had no trouble beating any of them, with the final boss taking less than a minute to take down. Now hard mode does take things up a notch, and I recommend playing on this difficulty if you want more of a challenge. It introduces additional enemy spawns and boss mechanics, and your health is no longer automatically refilled between stages. Once you've actually beaten the game, you'll also unlock new game plus mode, which basically sees level layouts mirrored, the movement and attack speed of enemies and bosses increased, and some enemies do have new attacks, like these tower dudes who now throw bombs at you instead of stones. Now, don't get me wrong, I did enjoy playing Battle Axe and I had a fun time working my way through its levels, but I just kind of expected more from the game considering its price tag, and I didn't expect to have been able to beat it in such a short time frame. I will mention that there is a third game mode called Infinite Mode, but in all honesty, this one's kind of a throwaway. It's essentially a high score chasing mode where you work your way through randomly generated maze like levels, and your objective is to rescue all of the NPCs, which will then open up the portal to the next level. As with arcade mode, you can buy items from the shop lady who is now randomly placed in levels, and as you work your way up through the levels, enemy spawn rates increase and you encounter the harder enemy variants found in arcade mode, but I found the whole thing got quite repetitive rather quickly, and there only appears to be two different level variants which cycle every five levels. Now I'll end things on a positive, because for me the visuals and audio of Battle Axe were by far its biggest highlight. I thought the game's pixel art was fantastic, with both the stage visuals and characters featuring some great details whilst maintaining the retro feel. The in-game sound effects were also very nice with that classic arcade tone to them, and the game's music was also pretty awesome, with some excellent chiptune tracks which perfectly captured the feel and sound of the 16-bit era of gaming. Now, so far as any other issues with the game go, there's really only a couple. The first being that the game's camera sometimes feels too close in, and off-screen enemies and traps can catch you out at certain points in the game. And the other issue is with the game's performance, with the frame rate dipping at times, which is especially noticeable in the third chapter, and the flame sprites for fire traps not appearing until the trap itself is on screen, which can cause you to take unnecessary damage. 
Overall, I think that Battleaxe Axe is still a good game. Its gameplay is fast paced and exciting, it captures the feeling of a classic arcade game and the essence of what made hack and slash games of the 90s so memorable, but it also just left me wanting more of it and I'm not sure that the game's content will be able to justify its price tag for most people. Now when it comes to my own personal rating of the game, I'm going to be giving Battle Axe 3 out of 5 stars. There is a lot to love with Battle Axe, especially if you're looking for a nice dose of nostalgia. It's clear that a lot of work and passion has been put into creating the game, and I look forward to seeing what the developer has in store for players in future. And so that's about it for this review of Battle Axe on the Nintendo Switch. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed it and it helped you out. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on both the game and the review in the comments section below. And if you like this type of content then go ahead and subscribe to the channel as I upload detailed and honest reviews like this one every few days. For now though I just want to thank you all once again for watching and until next time take care of yourselves and game on.